All right, we're going to talk about expected values of discrete RVs today. So you can think of an expected value as being like a mean, if you would repeat it over and over again, like what's the most likely thing that you would expect it to tend towards over time. So we can call this E of X, or we can call this mu X, and this is given by the formula of the sum of X. So the value that you'd be rolling on a die, the value you'd be observing, times the probability of that value. So you could think of like a standard die roll. There's gonna be six outcomes. You're either gonna roll a one, two, three, four, five, or six. And each of these has a probability of one sixth of happening. So if we wanna find the expected value of our die roll, we simply take all of the values we can roll, multiply them by the probabilities. So this gives us one times one sixth plus two times one sixth plus three times one sixth. And then we can simplify and find a value. So you would get one sixth plus two sixths plus all the way up to plus six sixths, which was gonna give us 21 over six. We could simplify this by dividing by three if we want to get seven over two. And we know that this is going to be 3.5. And this makes sense because we have one, two, and three. We have four, five, and six. We have our median numbers here. The rest are uniformly distributed. So it should be about halfway between those two values, which is 3.5. So let's try another problem below. This is independent of anything else. Maybe we can say this is the probability of the number of times someone has taken us the same course or something. So maybe 60% of people don't take it, 25% of people take it once, 10% of people take it twice, and 5% of people take it three times. So what would be the expected value? Like how many times does the average person take the course? So what we can do is we can multiply each y value by its probability, and we can add these together. So we get zero times 0 0.6, plus one times 0.25, plus two times 0.10, plus three times 0 0.05, which is gonna give us zero, plus 0.25, plus 0 0.20, plus 0.15. We can add these all together, and we're gonna end up with 0 0.6. So you could say, you know, if we were to pull people infinitely, we would get an average of about 0 0.6 people end up taking the course, if that's what these y and py values represent. So, that's how we can do it with just uh, regular discrete RVs using a table. But we can also think about Bernoulli RVs. So this is the case where you either have a success at uh, a chance alpha or you have a failure. So how we can do this is very similar. If we were to draw a chart from this, let's just do our x and p of x here. The chance of it failing is going to be 1 minus alpha and the chance of success is going to be alpha. So what this means find the expected value, what we're going to do is we're going to take 0 times 1 minus alpha, and we're going to add 1 times alpha, which is just going to give us alpha back when we multiply it out. So what this means is that the expected value of our PMF here is just going to be whatever the chance of success is, alpha. So let's say that we had some random variable where the chance of success is like 0.2. What's going to happen then is that the expected value is just going to be 0.2. We, we see a success roughly 20% of the time. So let's take a look at a more complicated problem. Suppose the number of plants of a particular type found in a quadrant in a certain geographic area is a random variable x with the following PMF. It's c over x cubed if x is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, or so on, and it's 0 otherwise. So to find the expected value, what we're going to do is we're going to sum all of our x's from 1 to infinity. We're going to take x times the probability of x. Now, this is going to be the same thing from x to infinity. x isn't going to change here, but we do know the probability at each point in x, which is going to be c over x cubed. Now, this is nice because we can cancel a little bit here. So we're going to get the sum from x equals 1 to infinity of c over x squared. Now, what do we know about this? Well, here we have our, our 
PMF. We're not going to get a precise value because we have Cs here. But what we do know, maybe from calculus, is that if you take the sum of 1 to infinity of x of 1 over x squared, this is going to, intend, uh, to 10 down to 0. So although we might not know the specific value, what we do know is that it is finite. So we can get a number off of this depending on what our C is here. And we know that eventually as we go on further and further, the probability is going to be very, very close to zero as X gets very high. Now here's another one. Let's say that the probability of X is equal to one over N for X is equal to one, two, three, and so on. And it's going to be zero else. So we're gonna do the same thing here. We're gonna take the sum from X to infinity of x times p of x, but here we know what our p of x is. It's going to be 1 over n. Now this looks like something that we can do a little bit more with, because if we plug in values for x, this is going to be 1 times 1 over n, plus 2 times 1 over n, plus 3 times 1 over n, plus so on. So Using this fact, perhaps we can get a little bit more clever with it. So we could factor out one minus n from each of these. And what we'd be left with is one plus two plus three plus four plus so on. And this is gonna go up to some value. And what we know about the sum of these numbers is if we're adding all of these, so you might recognize this part right here as just uh, the sum from n equals 1 to infinity or something like that. We have a formula for this. So we have our 1 over n, but this formula is also going to be n times n plus 1 divided by 2. So now if we multiply this out, we can get some canceling. So this is going to be n one plus 1 over 2. So if we have a value of n, then we can figure out exactly what the expected value is for this PMF. So this uses some ideas from calculus you probably have learned at some point, maybe you've learned it in discrete mathematics, or maybe you're learning it by now, um, but we do have some formulas that are useful. So the sum of all numbers is just going to be n times n plus one over two, and this is a good thing to commit to memory um, because you'll be working with summations a lot in all of those courses. Uh, so that is it for this video. If you have any questions, you know what to do. Leave them down in the comments below. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll see you in the next one.